Lord God, let thy blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this Advent wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask through this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. 
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and you have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join the choir in singing the psalm, the antiphon to the psalm at the appointed times.
Our King and Savior draweth near, come let us adore him. Adoremus Dominum. Our King and Savior draweth near, come let us adore him. Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Our King and Savior draweth near, come let us adore him. A reading from the first epistle to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. 
By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. O God, be in my mouth as I speak for you. Fill this place with your great grace. 
that we may leave this place less of what we used to be, more of what we ought to be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and great glory. My friends, there have been certain times in my life that I can relate to this apocalyptic, end-of-the-world type biblical writing. Perhaps the most recent occasion was Sunday, February 5, 2017. It was about 10.20 in the evening. The countdown to my own personal apocalypse was on as I watched the New England Patriots <laughs> score a touchdown in overtime. The mighty Falcons had once held a lead of 28 to 3, but all that hope evaporated in a single moment, and as the psalmist writes, those in red and black were left with a bitter bowl of tears to drink. <laughs> the worst part of all was various well-meaning friends kept texting me. They texted me all these preliminary congratulations knowing that my 40 years of wandering in the wilderness appeared to be almost over. My response to these texts was always the same. The game is not done. The Falcons, being the Falcons, can still mess this up. I wish, O oh Lord, I had not been so prescient. Of course, some of the texts that I sent and received that night uh, cannot be shared in this sermon, <laughs> especially if I want to keep it for general audiences. But when our Lord says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give off light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken, I can relate to those feelings, as I'm sure many of you can, that have ever seen your favorite team fall apart in the final moments of a game. But, putting aside my own good-natured pity party, I do want to turn to our gospel this morning. Apocalyptic writings like this gospel are one way biblical authors have expressed their hopes about how God should respond to the oppression and evil that inflict our world. This is a biblical theme as old as Exodus itself. When Yahweh, the Lord, he heard the cries of the children of Israel in Egypt, suffering under the bondage of slavery, and he responded by sending Moses to save his people. When the nation of Israel, some 500 years later, was carried off into exile, the temple of Solomon was destroyed by the Babylonians, the prophet Daniel arose, and he used apocalyptic visions to describe what God would do to vindicate his people and to bring them back to the promised land. These powerful, powerful themes continued into Jesus' day as John the Baptist in his camel skins stood by the River Jordan warning people to repent, repent from their sins and be ready for the inbreaking of God's kingdom and the Lord's return. This longing for salvation, this longing for freedom were very much a part of Jesus' life as he surveyed the religious and cultural landscape of his day. You may recall from history books, the Roman army, the Roman army were brutal, brutal occupiers of God's promised land in the first century. To go to Jerusalem, to visit the holy temple, was to see a watchtower of Roman soldiers, pilot soldiers, which had been erected right next to the temple so you could look over into the courtyard. There were even well-known divisions among Jesus' people. The Sadducees were the stuffy aristocracy that ran the Jewish temple. The Pharisees scrupulously observed 
all aspects of the Jewish law, probably with just a little bit, a little hint of self-righteousness. Now the Essenes had had enough of both of those groups. They just kind of threw in the towel. They thought the temple leaders were completely corrupt, and they retreated to the desert, the desert near the Dead Sea, to keep the Torah in their own way. Oh, and let's not forget everyone's favorite punching bag, the Samaritans. The Samaritans were looked down upon by everybody. They were half-breeds, not fully Jewish, not quite Gentiles. Faithful Jews, in fact, would go out of their way to avoid their, their villages whenever they went to pilgrimage to Jerusalem. The so-called promised land in Jesus' day was in a constant state of religious, political, and social tension. Sound familiar? Jesus' apocalyptic words are one way, one approach that he used and he was able to address this fear. It was one way he was able to address this tension that was such a part of his day. For our Lord, the apocalyptic clock was counting down. He wanted his listeners to be ready to stay awake for the Master's return. While some may have greeted this warning with apprehension, I believe that Jesus saw in God's return the presence of God's kingdom in the world. And Jesus saw this as a hopeful sign, a hopeful sign to all of God's people who suffered. For Jesus, these apocalyptic words from Mark's gospel were said with the knowledge that despite his own upcoming betrayal, suffering, and death, God, the God of the Hebrews, Yahweh, would ultimately prevail over the forces of violence and hate that afflicted the world. This morning, the Christian church begins the four-Sunday season of Advent. As a liturgical season, Advent reminds us not only to prepare ourselves to celebrate Christmas, but also to remember the apocalyptic dimensions of that second coming. In a frenetic world, Advent calls us all to slow down, examine our spiritual lives and the state of all our souls. More importantly, in a purposeful way, Advent, the beginning of the church year, the very start of the new church year, starts off this Sunday with readings about the end readings about the end. And while I know it can be tempting for well-meaning preachers to say that these apocalyptic visions of end times are one way to feel their, fill their congregations with fear and to take our focus away from the joy of Christmas, I prefer to think as Jesus did. There is hope, hope to be found in this second coming. In fact, to fully appreciate Advent, we should never ever separate the first coming of Christ from the second. So often our contemporary culture seeks to separate the love of Christ from the judgment attached to the apocalyptic visions of his return. And let's be honest, my friends, the baby in Bethlehem is a heck of a lot less threatening than the Jesus that comes on clouds descending and all those thousands of saints, as Charles Wesley writes, swelling the triumph of his train. At the same time, we should remember the second coming is God's response, God's response to our cries, our anguish, for help and salvation. These are the cries God hears from the victims of human trafficking, physical abuse, poverty, and all the evils and other type of oppressions that afflict this broken world. In this sense, Jesus' return is always about hope for those that suffer, and most importantly of all, hope for our own sinful souls as well. I love the way Thomas Merton put it. He writes, Advent is the beginning of the end of all that is in us that is not yet Christ. Advent is the beginning of the end of all that is in us that is not yet Christ. And looking around our own world today, there is little doubt that a more Christ-like life for all of us 
would serve our church and our community well. Advent calls us all to be a people, a church community that lives a life full of God's love, full of God's forgiveness for others, especially all people that suffer and cry out for the redemption of our world. This is the type of courageous Christian life that I believe is truly apocalyptic. And God knows the world, now more than ever, needs those types of doers. And it needs doers that bring the world that kind of hope. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our, our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Please kneel as you're able as we open our hearts to God. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us kneel and pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and the infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed, and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion, protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord. In the communion of James and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. 
Please join me in lifting up to God those who have asked for our prayers. Elizabeth Austin, Jay Barber, Bonnie Coghill, Bromby Earl, Lyndon Eves, Len Felton, Bill Hall, Ernest Hoffey, Joe Hart Long, Eleanor Lynch, Henry Maudlin, Rachel Hart Pena, Annette Phillips, Tom Pugh, Courtney Reynolds, Mark Shuford, <coughs> Melissa Silver, Marcia Rose Sullivan, and Armistead Williams. We pray for all who are homeless, for all who are victims of violence, and for all who are cold and hungry. We ask thy blessings upon the marriage of Elizabeth Sethel and Rob Gordon, who were married here yesterday. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of all who celebrate their birthday this week, and especially for Rick McCaig, Meg Clement, Carrie Levering, Susan Siegfried, Harriet Wright, Jamie Kane, Caroline Marvel, and Lilibet Woodward, who celebrate their birthday today. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Robert Ruckert, Nat Parham, and Marilyn Hardiker, who died recently, and Louise Wilmer Spillman, Wortham Anderson Spillman, Arthur Wilmer Spillman, Jane Wagner Spillman, and Wortham Anderson Spillman, Jr., in whose memory the flowers at the altar are given. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with thy will. And those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved Thee with Thy whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Great to welcome everyone today, especially as we kick off the season of Advent. A uh, special thank you to our guest organist today, Casey Dunaway. If we could just wave and give him a brief greeting from all of us here. <laughs> I do have several uh, important announcements, and some of them regard worship schedule stuff, so I'm just going to try to get through these uh, in, a, in a clear and a concise way. Um, today is the last day for the giving tree, by the way, so you can uh, pick up an ornament today before you leave, but please make sure you sign it out, and gifts are due uh, back here next Sunday. So uh, please do uh, take an ornament. We still have a few left, 
and get those back next week. All right, so here goes with the worship schedule. Uh, this week and next week, our schedule stays the same, all right? Uh, however, on December 17th, we'll have a 745 service, a 10 o'clock morning service, and then a 5 o'clock Christmas pageant. So on December 17th, 745, 10 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And this is one of these years where Advent 4 and Christmas Eve are on the same Sunday. So on that day for Christmas Eve, we'll have a 10 o'clock service to observe the fourth Sunday of Advent. And then, of course, we'll have our regular Christmas Eve services, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 11. So there are some differences the third and the fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, please do take your chimes home and note that as well. Two other quick offerings of worship. Um, as we know, many people deal with depression and grief during this holiday season, and we have a very special service this year that we're having a return called uh, Christmas Hope, and that will be Monday, December 18th. So take note of that as well. And also tonight, uh, a special treat here. We'll be having Advent lessons and carols at 5 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful service, and I invite you all uh, to get your Advent season off to the right way by coming tonight and being part of our Lessons and Carols service at 5 p.m. A grief and Loss Support Group will begin this Wednesday, December 6th, led by Hillary. <laughs> Kathy, oh, okay, somebody else is leading it. Right, okay, thank you. She's making sure it happens, okay. That's... <laughs> Alternative Gift Fair next Sunday, 1015, first floor of Misha House. And on December 17th, the Sunday that we have our 10 o'clock service instead of the 2, 9, 11, 15, um, we have music at the Advent Forum. And I love saying this, Richard Rumble and the Advent Apostles of Soul Band, okay? <laughs> that should be great, Richard Rumble and the Advent Apostles of Soul. Vestry nominations are also uh, off and running. Please get in touch with our senior warden, Peggy Crowley, if you have names of people you'd like to submit for consideration and the deadline for that will be December 22nd. Also today, I'm very uh, proud and pleased to be able to wear one of our Children's Center crosses. They are for sale as a fundraiser this Christmas season or Advent season to support the Children's Center. You can contact Winnie uh, Knup at the center to order one, and I, I, they even had a table out this morning, so they might still be out there following this service, uh, and the proceeds do go to support our center, so I encourage you to get your cross now before they disappear. Uh, again, if you're a guest or visitor this day, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to St. James's. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying... All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Those celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or have other need for prayer are invited to come forward to the altar rail for a blessing.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.